back. Good Hustle episode 14. John Henry. Zach Williamson. Uh, first off, we want to thank everybody for being a part of the show. Also, what helps fund this show is our real estate career. So if you know anybody that's looking to buy, sell, invest, please reach out to Zach or I. Our numbers are below. We're here to help. Um, today, a big day for us. We are it's an joined, awesome day. Yeah, joined awesome. by an awesome guest. This is Juwan Chisholm. Um, Juwan played running back for the Akron Zips which is awesome. Shout out Akron. Shout out Shout Akron. Out Akron. Uh, <laughs> and maybe we'll get to talk about how I almost beat Michigan. Oh, man. And uh, played for the Steelers as well, which was great. He's a running back. Um, and he's from Harrisburg. Yeah, born and, and raised. Born and raised. And you also are the owner of Struggle to Succeed Fitness. Yes, sir. Uh, and typically what we do on the show is we go through these whole list of questions, um, kind of go back and forth. But yep. I kind of wanted to change it up today because – I know when I share my experience, strength, and hope with sobriety, mm-hmm. literally they hand you the mic, and it's like 40 minutes where I'm talking. And I'm not saying we're not going to stop and ask a couple questions here and there. But honestly, you have a big story that goes well beyond your football career, mm-hmm. goes well beyond post-football. For sure. You know, it starts off much different than most football players. Mm-hmm. You know, I know yeah. you started as a young age. You probably started playing football. I started when I was nine. You were probably how old? Five. Five. Yeah. Five. <laughs> yep. Five or six. Yep. And, and you started off at a young age, but everybody, and I was reading in this book this morning, actually, like we all have, you know, life on life's terms during that process, things that happen to us. And I read a quote actually from Buddha today mm-hmm. wow. where, yeah, you get shot by an arrow. Okay, that's the pain. You're, you're going to have pain, but are you going to get shot by that second arrow where you're going to suffer? So mm-hmm. it's pain and suffering. So, you're allowed to go through pain, but blocking that second arrow of suffering is really what helps us move forward. And I think a lot of what your story is has to do with that. So, um, yeah, I just want to kind of hear about, like, basically how your football career started, the hiccups that you had, and just kind of your experience, strength, and hope in life in general. So uh, it all started on Jefferson Street, uh, just a young kid. Uh, always played outside, uh, played with the other kids. As you know, now we don't pretty much play outside no more. The kids is on the game most of the days. Yeah. So they do something <laughs> different. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah. We play tackle football and, you know. Just on the street. Get grass yards, whatever. Rocks all in the yard. Uh, uh, small, small fields, not so big, you know. Uh, free frog, you know, they call it free for all, free for all, whatever <laughs> yeah. it is. Uh, throwing the ball up in the air, go get it, go make yeah, the touchdown. Yeah. So it was natural. You know, just growing up, it was just natural just to, just to, you know, play play football, play basketball, just be an athlete. Yeah. Uh, mom and dad always, you know, had sports around us, revolved around us. Uh, and I always loved it from a kid. So just starting out starting out young, just being able to run track. Uh, and I got to spread my wings a lot with sports in general. I think sports made me feel uh, a sense of freedom and peace, you know. <laughs> Uh, everybody got something that they, you know, run and get away from. Mine's with sports. Mm-hmm. So uh, when I was playing, when I was playing sports, it just made me feel free. You know, yeah. uh, I played for the Broncos growing up. They turned into the East Shore Royals, then turned into Harrisburg Broncos, and then now everybody emerged. So it's the Harrisburg Cougars now, mm-hmm. uh, baby Cougars they call it. So yeah, yeah, I've been I've been pretty I've been pretty active since a child. So. Uh, I got all my confidence from those from those yard games and things of that nature. And uh, sports is all about confidence. Life is all about confidence. You know, yeah. uh, the more you get, the more you, the more you able to soar through life. So, uh, yeah, life got its got its hiccups, hi- hiccups and things of that nature. But that's how I was able to pretty much soar in that, in, in, you know, in the beginning. Yeah, and then I know you know freshman year you're at Harrisburg, mm-hmm. and some life altering things happen either freshman or your sophomore year. I was freshman. So freshman year, basketball, I had uh so freshman basketball, I think basketball comes before football, right? However it was, I had a broken bone in my foot for seventh and eighth grade and then I led into freshman basketball and I set out that year and then freshman football came around. Uh towards like the end of the freshman season, uh, I was hanging out at a friend's house. And uh, a tragic accident happened. I won't say tragic because nobody, you know, uh, but it was tragic for me. So uh, I was shot with a shotgun in my foot. 
Uh, with a shotgun? Yeah, I was shot with a shotgun. Yeah, I still got pellets in my foot to this day. Things Are like, you serious? It's like 70 of them. I had to go through. The f- I did 17 days. I think it was from April 22nd. April 22nd to January, February, March, April, May. April 22nd to May 7th or May 5th. Oh, uh, I got it tattooed on me today, so that's how I always remember. It's always with me. <laughs> I have uh, some of those. I did 17. <laughs> so I, did, I I did a total of 17 days in the hospital. And uh, my first three days, I think I had like 14 or 15 surgeries, something oh like that. God. Just cleanings and washings. You know, everything counts as a surgery. So yeah. a lot of it was yeah. just wash-ups and cleanings and just trying to get most of the pellets out. So uh, the first initial... The first initial thing that they said was amb- uh, amputation, which is cut off the toe, cut off the foot from the toe to the ankle. So the so just just for context, so you go into after this shotgun accident happens, and the first thing they're talking about is already amputation. Amputation, yeah. yeah. It was bleed. So I was scared at first because I always heard of internal bleeding. Right. I didn't yeah. see no blood at first. I just seen my shoe pushed into my foot from the impact. My yeah. shoes inside of my foot, like literally, I got Mickey Mouse socks on. I had Mickey Mouse and Nike <laughs> Nike pair of socks on. I remember like wow. remember like yesterday because uh, you wore two pair of socks back then because we didn't have all of those makeshift, you know, to keep the Air Force Ones not creasing. For my, yeah, 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 so yeah, we wore, <laughs> yeah, we wore exactly. Two, so we wore two pair of socks. Yeah. Uh, so my Mickey Mouse sock and my uh, Nike sock was pushed into my into my uh, foot, so you can see it, and it was just like swelled up instantly. I'm talking about like your foot's like this. Yeah. From the impact, it like just swelled up. Uh, I call, I call nine one one, and then uh, one of the friends picked up the phone and handled it from there. Uh, luckily, their mom was there. She kept pretty much everything calm. I still remember my first words. My first words was, "You messed up my career." Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. wow. Yeah. Because I wasn't yeah. even thinking about nothing else. You messed up my career. The pain didn't set in. So ambulance got there. My mom actually beat the ambulance there. She was wow. at my uncle's playing. Uh, car game and she got the call she beat the ambulance there uh so when they came uh he was like he gotta go we gotta rush him to hershey he can't go to harrisburg i'm literally two minutes away from harrisburg what you have a trauma unit trauma unit yeah i was literally two to three minutes away and i'm lucky i didn't go there because it probably would be amputated uh so we drove all the way to hershey and he's like he's, he's losing a lot of blood he's losing a lot of blood uh, so when I get there, I think I had like six to seven infusions, blood infusions. Uh, and the doctor, that's when the doctor came in and said, we'll have, I had like a, a ton of family there that came in, uh, during that time. My grandma was already at the gate. Uh, God rest her soul. Uh, then I had like 20 people in the waiting room. Everybody's trying to get back. I'm steady bleeding. You see it all on the floors, like leaking, it's leaking. I'm talking about coming out. I didn't get to get back into surgery until like an hour or something like that. So, uh, when the guy came in and said amputation, my dad told everybody to clear the room. He said, "My dad, he said you ain't doing a, you ain't doing a muff, thing. you ain't cutting nothing <laughs> yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do what you can. Yeah, he, he, his words, you ain't cutting a muff thing off. So that's crazy. Uh, luckily, I had pops for that. Uh, or it'd be a different story. <laughs> yeah, It'd probably be off. Well, I know it'd be off. Well, it's even uh, crazier too that like they recommended the amputation, and here you are today. Like, like we'll t- we'll get into some of the yeah, things yeah, you're doing for sure. athletically it's now, but. Yeah, it's I just, crazy. I can't believe the doctors immediately. Like, of course, I don't know the context, but well, I, I can't believe that was immediately their recommendation. The lucky part was Dr. Bustilio and Dr. something. God rest my mom's soul, but she remembered the doctor's names like, right. like mm. uh, no other, right? Yeah. Uh, and then my dad's going through brain cancer right now, so he can't really, uh, he can't really tell you, he can't really talk. He knows what's going on, but he can't, can't really talk. talk. Yeah. Uh, so when I was going through that, through that phase, uh, when he came in and said, no, we're not doing that, Dr. Bastilio and them uh, stayed an extra 17 days because it took me 17 days. Dr. Bastilio and the other doctor was supposed to leave that very next day to go start their own practice. One in Washington, and they stuck Seattle, around. one in Philadelphia. So one in Seattle, one in Philadelphia. They pushed that move, they pushed that move date back 17 days just to stay in there and infuse all of these small bones back together. Everything, so it was it was God's plan. Yeah, don't you think it's amazing? Like <laughs> these guys have so much more going on in the world, mm-hmm. right? And they still take the time out for somebody that they don't know. Oh, and no. and these are the type of people that God puts in your life for a reason. Yeah, like the, there's only one reason that you walked in. Well, that you were ambulanced into this hospital, mm-hmm. and I was also a trauma unit. I was lifeline there in '99. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. 
and they didn't think I was actually going to live. So they told my family, like, when they arrived, I'm dead. Like, they actually mm. told my, you know, just start praying. But, you know, like, the fact that you go into this hospital and those are the two doctors and they're like, you know what, we're going to stick around. Like, that's that's all a bigger plan than we ever had. Absolutely. Yeah. Way bigger plan. Yeah, so you were there 17 days. So I was there for 17 days. Uh, just cleanings and washings and just yeah. surgery after surgery after surgery after surgery after surgery <laughs> after surgery. Uh and then I had to stay in a, it was like an 80 to 100 degree room. I had to stay within that temperature, 80 to 100 degrees. And I think it was like 97, it's summertime. So it was like 97 to 100 out. It was one of, it was one of those hot summers. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah. hot outside and I'm in a hot room. And uh, nice. they had to fuse the bones back together. So in order for the bones to fuse back together, I guess heat was part of that process. Uh, so in the midst of that, I couldn't have no water. Yeah. I couldn't really eat, so I had to take pills, too, in the midst of this, like blood thinners, pain medicine, Love things of that nature. Yeah. Nice. So uh, yeah. doing so, uh, that's, my mouth was just dry. I'm losing weight. I think I lost, like, 30 pounds or something of that nature, 20 pounds. Yeah. Uh, so doing so, during all of that, uh, I had to take, like, medicine with, like, applesauce, but I only can get a a, a very limited supply, so I got to make it work with whatever kind of they give me. I couldn't eat the whole thing because I wasn't allowed to eat, eat or drink wow. during that process. And if I was allowed to eat, which I don't remember, I know I wasn't allowed to drink. Uh, my mouth was dry. How long did this last? Five this, days. I was okay. in there for five days. Out of the seventeen, I did five in a in a uh, eighty to hundred degree room, <laughs> peeing in a catheter. Catheter. Yeah. Yep. I had one. Uh, <laughs> not fun. Yeah, yeah, man. So, but all of that is going to go into. What you guys ask later, like yeah. why I'm mentally how I am today. Yeah, exactly. And, and and even for me, like people are like, oh, do you have any regrets? Do you have any? No, I don't have any nope. regrets. And like, you know, like I had a bad accident. Okay, I got over it. I didn't let the suffering destroy my whole life. Yeah. And if it wasn't for what happened that night and the years that followed, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that I get to sit here with you mm-hmm. and have this discussion that maybe somebody out there and the world's going to hear, and it's going to help. Like, it doesn't get better than that for us. Nope. Right. So your recovery goes through, and then you get back into ball, playing football at Harrisburg. So, yeah, that's a funny story, too. <laughs> uh, so I got back into it. Uh, however, they told me I'll never be able to, like, tight rope or probably never will be the same. Uh, if I did a sport with any type of tight roping thing, that's probably done, you know. Uh, right. only got really – I got three toes that work. One is a hammer is toe, right? so my big toe works, but it's, like, curved in. This toe is a hammer toe. Uh, this one is, like, dang there, connected with that. My pinky toe wiggles and my big toe wiggles. Everything else is just, like— Is that because of all the—I guess the bones in your foot, like the small yeah, metatarsals yeah, or whatever yeah, they're called? Yeah, everything, yeah. yep. So, wow. Uh, in my 11th grade year, I got back out there. Ninth grade year happened. Tenth grade, I had to sit out the whole time. Crunches. Mm-hmm. I meant crutches. Uh— uh, bed rest, having my foot elevated, having a walking boot on for dang near six months to a year, crutches, I mean crunches, uh, crutches, I should yeah. say not crunches, crutches. That's okay. Uh, just going through all of the process, all of yeah. the hard stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, pill bottle on the side of my bed. Yeah. Uh, uh, the little Percocets, oxycodone side mm-hmm. of the bed. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And I started taking a lot of those and started wondering, like, in high school. This is high school. I'm like, yo, this don't feel right. I'm sleeping all the time. Uh I don't want to be in the heat. I don't want to be bothered. Gave my dad the pills. He threw them away. Got through it from there. Those pills are going to be dangerous, man. Oh, it was super dangerous. And it it, it comes back later in life, right? But uh, my 11th grade year, I went back out there. uh, And I remember vividly, I tell everybody this story. My cousin Blue, uh, God rest his soul, uh, he died from overdose. He went to, I think, Arizona State, and then he was coaching for Harrisburg at the time. <laughs> Probably super lucky to have him at that point. Uh, I was out there, and I was coming back, and it wasn't the same. So I felt like I was moving slow. I felt like I was uh, just not there for real. And at this time, I'm in the I'm in the streets heavy now. Yeah. So I'm like a I'm like a kid who I didn't have football for that little period of time. So I, I'm from the city. I'm from poverty, right? Uh, so you you kind of adapt to what you see. So uh, I saw a lot of drug dealing and a lot of, and those are the cool guys, right? And I played football, right? That was a cool thing. Yeah. So how can I fit back in? Mm. Start selling drugs and things of that nature. So I'm here first kind of in that now, right? So I come back out 11th grade year. I don't really feel it. My cousin Blue's like, uh, 
I'm about to walk off the field one day. Cause then Blue's like, what you doing? I was like, man, it's, it's probably ain't for me no more. You know, yeah. it's like, uh, nah, it's, 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 you look good. Cause it come from where you just came from. You look good. So I ended up standing out there and the rest was history. That 11th grade year, uh, I ran for a thousand yards. And if you watch the tape, I was wobbling everywhere. Wow. Just wobbling. I, I didn't really have the stability. I didn't know that. I didn't know my new body. I can't yeah. imagine wobbling for a thousand yeah. yards. <laughs> I remember, uh, I remember Coach Cal, I remember Coach Calvin. Funny. I remember Coach Calvin, Coach Calvin Everett. Uh, he's a, he's a Hasbury High coach now. Uh, and I always salute him, right? I don't talk to him too much often today, uh, but I always salute him for the simple fact that he helped me during this process. He knew what I was going through. Uh, he used to come get me at like seven, anywhere from seven to nine at night, and we'll go hit the gym at like that Planet Fitness out there by the mall. Yeah, uh, I think it was Planet Fitness at the time. We go lift things of that nature, and that helped me. Uh, I didn't know what he was doing at the time, but I think it was just keeping me away from a hundred percent. Yeah, it's keeping me away from what I could have been getting into. <clears throat> and uh, I still remember he left to go to McDevitt that year. And he watched my tape. He was like, uh, he's like, man, you wobbling everywhere. So I wobbled my way to a thousand yards. Uh <laughs> that's crazy. Then man. coach college coaches is coming in, but my my tenth grade year I didn't take it serious in school. Mm. And this is where school haunted me. Uh yeah, yeah. I was leaving out. I leave out the side of the building all the time. I would leave school, don't come to school. And what I'm playing for, I mean, what I'm going to school for now, I don't play football. So it came back to hunt me, eleventh grade year, college coaches coming in, hey, your GPA is too low. Can't do nothing. Larry Johnson, I still remember Larry Johnson, oh, Penn State. Was, he oh, came yeah. in, he shook my hand. Senior. Yep, yep. senior. Biggest hands oh. I probably ever shook. Uh, <sighs> he says, Juwan, if you ever get to college, you'll have a hell of a career. You'll just never play for us. And at the mm. time, I'm like, eh, I I kind of was like, why are you telling me that? Like, that sounds like a, a hateful thing like to a say. Dick, like, yeah, yeah, yeah like, a, like, like a dick, dude. right? Yeah. But now, knowing what I know now and going through that process, that was the realest thing he could have said because no college coaches is really – they don't keep it authentic. You know, mm-hmm. you got to – you kind of got to be a, a storyteller and a great yeah, seller. Right. And there's no knock to them. That's that's part of the job. Yeah. You know, but it's really next man up. You know what I mean? But he told me that. Uh, and and you actually – not to try to interrupt, but you actually have been coaching some local people around with that exact thing. Like, when they're looking at different schools and whatnot, like – Telling them, like, you want somebody that's going to be honest with you, not somebody that's just going to sell you. I tell them all the time. Over time, so we've only been doing this for two years, a little bit under two years, but I've been doing it for a lifetime for real uh, because I went through all of those hurdles and obstacles. And these kids ain't used to really hearing nobody tell them the truth because everybody is so much want to ride the coattail. I'm that person that ain't riding nothing. I don't care about what you got going on, how many yards you threw for, passed for. I'm going to keep it real with you. So at the end of the day, I know that authenticity is going to come back five to ten years later. And you're going to be like, <coughs> not a told me so, God, but you're going to know that I kept it real with you. Yeah. And you ain't going to know that I just was just telling you stuff. So some of them are picking up early. Some of them won't pick up late. And unfortunately, it's going to be too late, you know. Uh, but over time, they'll be able to tell that next generation. Yeah. This yeah. dude is really what he say he is, right? He's as advertised as my barber would say, yeah. as advertised. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not lying to you. It's, it's just that's just what it is. That's the nature of the beast. When you go to this next level, it's gonna get treacherous. They going their job is to. I said I kind of had a college coach that stood at my house, stayed at my house the other day, Division One, and he says, "I want to college with him. Our job is to break you in the beginning. Yeah. Let's see if you can stay around. If you stay around, then we know this oh, is for yeah. you." But most kids don't know that. They think I'm a four or five star. Oh, coach really loves me. Well, coach loves you until you get onto that campus. Once you're on that campus, I'm going to tell you like Coach Rob Ionello told us, all that nice guy stuff that I told you in front of your parents and stuff, that sh- is out the window. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to ball. And, and you even discussed this with me a little bit earlier. It's just basically like the people that you think are the hardest on you or that don't like you are probably the ones that care the most. No, they do care the most. Yeah, correct. Because I'm going to tell you this, and I tell them this all the time. When, when I'm talking to you and I'm on you, that means I still care. Same thing the coach is going to tell you. Yeah. When I stop talking to you is when you should really worry. Yeah. Mm. If I stop talking to you, that's a little bit uh, – silence is usually the – it's the indicator that I'm talking to the next person. Giving up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, wow. I'm giving up. But when I'm talking to you, yeah, I still got faith in you. I still love you. I still – you know, I'm always love you, right? But that's, that's probably when you should really listen up. When I'm done talking to you is when you should start worrying. Right. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, so. I uh, I want to take it back a little bit, okay? Take me back. So 
you grew up on the same street as Ricky Waters, Micah Parsons, some of these guys who, mm-hmm. of course, and, and yourself too, mm-hmm. like like a lot of big athletes and stuff here in Harrisburg. Um, and you witnessed some stuff in your early childhood that I don't know if you want to talk about much, but we can get into that too. No, we about, can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, And this is just from your ISSA article that you mm-hmm. had for personal training and things like that. Uh, ISSA is, I guess, who, who um, certifies That's what I'm certified through. Certifies you, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. one of the things that I read in there that was pretty shocking to me is you witnessed a murder as a as a ten year old in Harrisburg. Yeah, um, very random too. Yeah, that's, that was just the first one of, I think, total of three I've seen in my life. So it was yeah. just the first one. Wow. Yeah, and so I'm I'm hearing I'm hearing your story as we go through this, and I'm hearing like insane shotgun accident and mm-hmm. you know drug dealing and pills and stuff and mm-hmm. witnessing a murder as a as a young kid mm-hmm. and. I just like I just find it amazing seeing you here now and and how you push through not only that in high school like like the I guess the wisdom to keep going in high school and eventually you, you had you scored six touchdowns in one half in high school which is yep. just I want to hear about that. Yeah, 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 but will. but I guess my my bigger overarching question here is how do you after after seeing some of the stuff that you've seen and growing up in the way that you did like you said in poverty and things like that how mm-hmm. do you how do you get it in yourself to keep going? think trauma make you a man it happens young right so it's always stuck with me i'm still telling you the story at 32 that's trauma yeah because the average thing that you do you don't really remember 22 years ago Mm -hmm. but something that vividly sticks in front of your mind is trauma kind of if it's a bad thing right that's trauma yeah i had to learn that through counseling the rehab (laughs) through a lot right you learn that and there when they break it down to you and you finally start coming to grips and you crying and you're like, why am I crying for? Yeah. You've been mashing this all these years. Yeah, you got you got to feel it to live through yeah, it. Yeah, it's, 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 it. it's wow, right? Yeah. Uh, I didn't never even know that I had trauma. So I'm just <laughs> like, all right, this is this is where I'm from is normal. Yeah. So we try to normalize it. And that's why most of us is messed up. We try to normalize something that's not normal. Yeah. So... uh the first one that I seen, it was just random, literally sitting at the door. There's a guy literally sitting out in front of, like, if my screen door was here, yeah. there's a guy sitting right there where John's at, right? And he's parked. Just probably stood there for at least 10 to 30 minutes. I can't really remember the time frame, but he was sitting there. Yeah. For, for whatever reason, he knew. So the guy that he killed was riding down the street, whatever that time frame was, and he just pulls in front of the car. The van wrecks into the back of this Cadillac, uh, wrecks into the back of the Cadillac. Dude in the Cadillac gets out. The guy in the van gets out. He already knew what it was. We don't. It was like, all right, regular crash. Start hearing shots fired. He's chasing oh. down. He's, little, he's a Jamaican dude, so he's talking in Jamaican this words. This happened right in front of your house? Or literally not even 20 feet. Can't even, probably not even that. So, like, it's vivid. Like, you can't erase that. It's not like it happened 10 blocks down. Oh, yeah, I got yeah. that. No, it's, like, vivid. You get to, you get to really see. So like you get to really dive into that picture from that day and just everything else that happened from there, you know. Uh, just got to talking some words yeah. to him for whatever reason. I uh, my understanding is they was friends and got it was you know just having it's disagreements. Personal. It was real personal. Mm. Uh, but luckily the dude came back. I think this happened when I was ten. Dude got caught around the senior year. He came back to the states. He was in Jamaica. Came back to the states and felt bad about it, and think he did like five to ten years, so it should be out now. Wow, uh, you know, yeah. So you said something that just blew my mind. It was you don't remember all the good stuff, you mm-hmm. remember the trauma. That's all you and, remember, and that's why there's. I'm. I never even thought about that because I. I mean, I can vividly remember the traumas of my life, mm-hmm. whether they were three months ago, which I haven't had many traumas since in a long time, but like whether they were I was fifteen or seventeen or nineteen, whatever. And I can tell you that's one of the reasons I started coaching sports was I remember really bad coaches mm. more than I remember really good ones. Oh, yeah. mm. And I wanted to make a difference in coach kids and be that really good coach mm-hmm. because I want them to remember me just as much as they remember the bad coach. Like, that's why I started coaching. Like, for service work for me wow. and sobriety, like, my dad was a good coach. Mm-hmm. So having that experience of having him there, and he didn't call me John on the field. Like, I was J.P., I got in the car, the game's over, I'm John again. I'm a different person on the field, though, because he didn't treat me any different than he treated anybody else, yep. which I really, to this day, still appreciate. Mm-hmm. But, like, when you said that, I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I never even thought of something like that. Like, that's what we remember. 
And I think our biggest problem, you know, especially now in our nation, is people hold on to the negatives. They mm. don't know how to go through counseling like you did, cry about it, deal through mm. that pain. And until you do that, you're never going to heal. Yep. You don't heal, and so then you don't be get internal. better. Mm-hmm. So it's always going to be internal. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. I had a uh, off topic real fast, but on topic, I had a teacher stop me. At the YMCA the other day, one of my childhood teachers, and I was considered, oh, yep. I was considered as that bad kid in school. Yeah. I say, hey, what's so different about you today, and how are you so good with these kids, and how are you getting, how are you getting through to them? I mean, getting through to them. Yeah. And uh, you were one of those, you know, one of those kids that was kind of considered bad. And I said, well, the thing is, and I think it, it kind of shocked him. Hopefully, it helped him. He said, well, the thing is, you never really took the time out to understand you won. You just came in was a teacher. You wasn't mm. you wasn't a counselor, or you didn't really too much care about the kids. Yeah. You didn't know that Juwan seen a murder at ten. You didn't know that Juwan stood in the household that I don't really want to talk about. You didn't know that Juwan had to fight this. You didn't know that Juwan had to fight that. All to seem normal in front of all these kids. Yeah. When I come to school, and we probably all going through stuff, but some people handle it different. So you didn't know all of that because you didn't ask. You, you didn't just ask, looked at yeah. it. Yeah. It was like wow. Like yeah. I yeah, like, we God talked bless about you. that with um with walk off uh, with Chris Heisey too. Um, he was an MLB player. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about that with him about how like there's there's uh, so, something going on with school where a lot of the time if you if you don't fit into one of those boxes of sit down, shut up, take the test, learn what I have to tell you, like you're you're just gonna be kind yeah. of an outcasted kid, right? Yeah, and I felt that way kid. too, in a different way, but I, I felt that too, where I you know I was a people person and I mm-hmm. wanted to talk and I I was considered a class clown and all those kind of things. And I never really fit into what the school system wanted to give me. Um, and so it took me later in life to be able to be a successful person. Um, yeah. And I see, I see that in you, too, where, you know, yeah. it kind of took learning on your own because you didn't have that, that uh, person who wanted to understand you, like you said. It's not always the worst thing to grow up fast. Like it, it is, and I can remember, like you were saying, like the safest you felt and the things that you remember was, being, was playing sports. For sure. Like I remember, like we didn't have the easiest childhood. And I remember my last really good memories were on the baseball field. Mm. Like, and I played football, baseball, basketball, but I remember, and I live on the street now where I grew up playing baseball. So the baseball fields I grew up playing on are like a half mile from my house, which is amazing to me because I drive by and I, and I look at that field and I can remember the best parts of my childhood because they were on that field. No mm. fans or butts. That's where my best, that's, that was the highlights of my, my childhood. Yeah. Can we kind of get into like your, then you moved on f- sophomore year, you wobbled for a thousand. How was your <laughs> senior year? So my senior year was pretty much the was pretty much the same, but a lot more stronger. So I worked out three times a day getting into my senior Ooh. year. Uh, but I got to tell kids today, kids how to do it today, but they're not properly putting the right nutrition into their body. Yeah. So Chick-fil- I had a Chick Fil A. I, I, mean, I had a dad. I had a dad that the Lord's chicken. Steak. Yeah, that's a fact. Yes. <laughs> that's the good stuff, man. I love that stuff. Yeah, I, I, that's funny you say that. Uh, I had I had a dad uh, that cooked me steak and chicken and uh, oh, nice. made sure I had those meals. You know, so yeah, that's good for you, man. One one I had with a trainer, uh, one I had with my school, and then one I had with Calvin Everett. Calvin used to take me out and uh, go left. So I had like it was like a period of time for like that two three month span. I work out like three times a day. Wow, yeah, just build that strength back up. Just build it back up, and you can see it. It was totally different. Senior year. Were you getting a lot of calls from recruits, a lot of visitations? Absolutely. Uh, and some of them knew what the grades were, and mm-hmm. it was still coming. Yeah, yeah. Just hoping that I can all get it right they fix at, it up. at some point. Uh, and I did get it right at a point, right? And the perfect school came. I didn't think it was a perfect school at the time because mm-hmm. it's not the Power Five. Because right. that's all that recruited me was the Syracuse's, the Maryland's, the uh, Iowa, the, yeah. you know, the – you know, teams like that, Power Five. So when Akron came in, once again, it's my dad. Uh, Akron came in. George Chump was their coach. George was getting a little bit old. Legendary coach, though. Yeah, very But he was getting old. You know, he ain't really had a time to sit down and uh, sit down and give you, you know, talk to college college recruits all day. George falling asleep by now. You know, George, <laughs> George was. but George's bedtime know, is 530, right? <laughs> for sure. So George falling asleep. So one day my dad's up at the school. Uh, my dad's up at the school and uh, he's talking to George why I'm not getting recruited, things of that nature. Uh, and University of Akron just so happened to call. New coaches was coming in. Uh, and there was a guy named Anthony Holmes who was 
leaving Milford from Harrisburg and going up to Akron. They wanted to know about Anthony. And my dad just so happened to be in the office at the time. And uh, George said, well, I have a parent in here right now of Juwan Chisholm. And I'll tell you right now, if you get him, it'll change the program. Mm. Now, this is something that George can do on a daily basis. His word is his word, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it was just perfect timing. What he would have said that my dad was in there, who don't, who knows? But he didn't lie. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, maybe he ain't had that energy. Juwan also needed to take accountability because Juwan didn't have the grades. Yeah. I could have made it easier on myself. So it's not George's fault. It's Juwan's fault. Right. At this age, I know. Uh, same thing I tell the kids. Every time they give me an excuse, I tell them X, Y, and Z. Did you do this? Did you do that? I had a mom call me the other day. Hey, what do you think here? I said, well, uh, do we have any offers? Why are you doing this step? I will go about it this step, but, hey, go with what you know. But this is just my opinion. I'm going to give you the honest opinion. You know, if you take it for yeah. what you know. Yeah. Right, right. So so you go to Akron, had a great career there. Yeah. Um, what, what was your biggest experience and your strength from that place? It was a blessing. Uh, once again, you had to be mentally tough to make it through the cycle that we made it through. I think – out of those, it was like 70 people on that roster when I first came in. I think like it was like 20 to left out within like the first month. Wow. So the host wow. coming in, Rob didn't play. Rob Ooh. was trying to weed out all of the all of the bad culture guys mm. and try to bring in new. You know, uh, I wouldn't say he failed in the midst, but we went 1-11 for two years straight mm. in the midst of him trying to change the program around, and that wasn't enough. So he got up out of there, but it was hard. He was coming from Notre Dame, trying to keep the Notre Dame structure. Mm. So we had to wear high white socks every practice, every day. We went full pads a lot. It's steaming hot. Uh, there was a time where uh, it was a guy who came out like five minutes late before like a spring game, or like it was a it was a it was a it was a practice or a spring game to where our parents can our spectators can come to. He made his run a hundred. I mean twenty one ten gassers. Wow. Before the before the game even started, because that guy came out five minutes late. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so it's man. like. Mental toughness was built there. You can leave yeah, or you can stay. And by the way, guys, if you're enjoying this episode of the Good Hustle podcast, please go ahead, leave a like, subscribe on the YouTube. And also, we are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts now. So um, if you want to listen without the video part, you can do that. Yep. And if you're looking for any real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, or investing, please contact Zach or myself. Our numbers are below. Back to the podcast. I know I didn't want to go back to. That's, that's coming back here to Harrisburg. Jefferson, yeah. I knew where I was going to. I don't know. Most kids didn't, though. Most kids go back to wherever they're from, and, you know. Yeah. Uh, so that made you a man. Oh, so I yeah. think out of every – I think my class was about 20 to 30 people. I think seven remained. And then at the, really at the end of that, it was like three or four of us that really remained out of that out of that class. So we always make fun of uh, <laughs> make fun of that when we see our pictures. It's like this one picture. It's just like us six or seven of us in there. It's like if you made it through this, you can make it through whatever. I yeah. mean that. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I, I, like, I truly And you're still that. friends with these guys, too? Yeah, the, one of them just stayed at my house the other day. He's a coach now. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. you were oh, saying cool. that. Yeah. Where does he coach at? Uh, he's at Bucknell. Buck, oh, yeah, yeah. Bucknell. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you have to. That's cool. That was a time to. That was a time to be alive right there. Yeah. It was, you was either going to, you was either going to become a man or you just turn into a little boy. The little boys left. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> I wouldn't even say he was a little boy because it was hard. Oh, yeah. Because Rob didn't hard. play. Even some of the coaches were butt heads with Rob, but Rob's it. Rob, that's just what Rob was. Rob was trying to come in and change the program. Yeah, it's funny. I just that's the guy I just seen in Kansas not too long ago. And he said uh, I stood right next to him. He said I uh, seen him for the first time in thirteen years. I thought I didn't like him, but it's all smiles. He's the one who gave me my opportunity. He's yeah. the one that gave one point nine GPA Juwan a scholarship when nobody wow. else didn't. So you got to look at it different. He gave me an opportunity. That's why I'm able to stand here with him today. And he said it. He said, Jawan, I always knew you'll be here because you always knew how to figure things out. That feel good. It felt great. Because at the time, you thought he didn't even like you. Probably. You're like, man. Same thing. The same text I got the other day. I love you. And I know the potential that you have. And I want you to understand. I don't want you to waste that. And why I'm really big on it with these athletes and why I'm so stern on them is because I don't want you to hit the part that we're going to get to. That's the depression part. Yeah. Right. Some of y'all not going to make it back. I know people that committed suicide from sports depression. Mm. So some of y'all not going to make it back because the love don't feel the same. Yeah. It's just like if you have a lot of money and everybody's around, <clears throat> you go broke, nobody's around. We yeah. hear the story time and time again. You a football Especially star. professional 
Man, listen, Sports. You're yeah. a football star. You're used to that love and right, you're used right. to those people telling you everything that you want to hear, not what you need to hear. Yeah. So I'm big on that. I'm stern on it. Right. Yeah. You know? So why don't we get into all that? So you so you went to Akron for four years, right? I did five. Five years at Akron. Okay. Did you do a red shirt year, I guess? Yep. Okay, nice. Okay. Yep. And so did you start the the last it was a three years or something like that. I started all four. Started all four. Yep, I started all four. Man, what a I what a beast, a, I was, man! I was a freshman. <laughs> I was a freshman All American. Uh, Bleacher Report. Wow. Uh, on there, Jadavion Clowney and guys of that nature. That's amazing. Yep. TV so, is so with that name. That's yeah, huge. man. And the yeah. uh, and the tag was even though Juwan's on a one and nine football team, uh, he's like the only shiny ornament. Uh, on the tree. On the tree. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a crazy. Is that like, in the article? Yes, in the article. That's, that is a great. Yep. What a wild wild article. Awesome. <laughs> we had a lot of great players. Not to take nothing from the team. Yeah. We had a lot of great players. We just had the wrong structure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We just didn't know how to really. It was a losing program. So when you're a loser, only thing you know is loser tactics. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's why they try to bring in winners because winners are going to bring winner mentalities around. Yep. Right. Like the guy Kirk Mangum, uh, my brother, who's uh, who got who got me into ISSA. Yeah. He's always been a winner. They bought him from Washington. And then you see the mentality he had vice yeah. versa the loser mentality that Akron had. And it was totally different. Oh, I'm going to work out after this. Oh, no, I ain't. I'm going home. <laughs> right. Well, I'm going to stay here and work out. He was a guy to stay and work out. The rest of us want to go home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, you know, some of us follow the losers. Some of us follow the winners. Some people follow Kurt. And you see where Kurt is today. Yeah. yeah. It's always a winner mentality goes into life. So did you did you declare for the draft after your I guess your fifth year at Akron? Is that what yep, I declared okay. and uh that was tough. That was really tough. That was probably like the one of the toughest times. Uh so this is around the time Aaron Hernandez and man, oh, yeah. man people can you you can, I can speak on it now. This is around the time Aaron Hernandez was going through that tattooed all up just like me. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so you're gonna get the wrong concept. Yeah. I didn't party, I didn't too much hang out mm. with the whole team. So I was always like that guy that I lived 30 minutes away from the facility. My mom came to stay with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the big knock was why did his mom move up here? Why is he, why is he so standoffish? Uh, mm-hmm. Why doesn't he do what the regular do? He's good, but uh, word from one of my agents at the time was, it was either he's a he's a he's a black horse or he's a wild horse, one of the two, and that mm-hmm. basically mean it's a great player, but it's a if we give him this money, what's going to happen? So they they were scared. They had character concerns of you that, right. that yep. were just pretty unfair. I they, got I got asked a lot of questions during that draft process too. Hey, has your brothers ever been in jail? Well, my brothers had just went to jail mm. for drugs. You know, uh, yeah. hey, why your mom up here? Why your mom come stay with you? Yeah. Well, you ain't know my mom was suffering from addiction. You ain't know my mom was the happiest she ever been when she's up there. Once again, you ain't asked those. You just judge. Yeah. yeah. You so know, it had you, nothing to do with play stuff. It was all just character stuff. It was a lot of character, I think, that yeah. went into it. Uh, I mean, the talent spoke for itself. Right. Uh, I still remember my running back coach bringing me in like, hey, last year the Jets had you here on the draft board. This year it's kind of, you know, uh, and a lot of things go into that. I still remember the Miami Dolphins. I got a text by – doesn't mean nothing. doesn't mean you're supposed, to, you're supposed to get drafted. But I had got a text from Miami Dolphins running back coach on, like, a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're probably going to draft you within these rounds. Uh, I think it was, like, fifth through seventh, which okay. means – let's be honest. I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. That doesn't mean nothing, to be honest with you. They don't tell you first, nothing else is guaranteed. Right. Mm-hmm. So, fifth through seventh, we probably a draft you. So, the, the recruiter for – I mean, not the recruiter, the uh, – the draft, the draft guy that comes in and does all of the questions sure. and things came in to meet me like that Monday or Tuesday, just to go over stuff. And I instantly seen him lose interest when uh, he asked this question. He says, "Did you ever smoke before? Not do you smoke? Have right. you ever smoked? Like in your life?" He knows I already smoked because I was a smoker in college. Yeah. So what I did, I go home and I just chill. It was long days, stressful days, right? Yeah. Um. So I said no. He said, have you ever smoked? I said, mm. no. Mm. And you see the pens just start getting shorter. It went from uh, here to, uh, all right. Like you checked out. Yeah, you're done. You lie. You, you just bold-faced lie. So I always, tell the, I always tell the kids, even growing up now, tell the truth. Yeah. Because they already know. It's a billion-dollar industry. Isn't that crazy? Like, it's a billion-dollar industry. Yeah. They like, probably called someone right before that to make sure. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, too, crazy. take accountability instead of lying. Yeah. Yes, I smoked in the past, but now I know where I'm headed to. I know what I'm getting into. Uh, 
that's not important anymore. Yeah. Uh, I mean, can you imagine how much different that would have made that draft? Never know. Yeah. But you know what? Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens the way it's supposed to. So, hey, I'm, um, I'm fine. I got all my limbs. I don't have no, no you know, like, unfortunate shades here. Yeah. Around Shazier, you know what I mean? Yeah. I get to walk. I get to play with my kids. Yeah, uh, so my thing is, everything happened for a reason. Yeah. Where I'm at today, I man, I tell everybody, I'm not, I'm the most happiest I ever been. Good. Yeah. Without running a football. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. So you ended up going to the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Played for how many years? Uh, literally five preseason games. Okay. So we did five preseason games. Uh, I got cut on the last cuts. Oh. When he bought, yeah, oh yeah, final last, cuts. Yeah, last I made mean, the last ones. He went on a funny story. Oh. I got, I gotta tell you this. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in a hot tub on a final cut, uh, final cut day, right? And this, and this cornerback comes in, and he's, he's like, man, he getting rid of everybody. He's been a vet though, so I don't know how this goes. He said, Who was man, it? Do you remember? Uh, man, I don't remember his name. He ended up playing for the Titans and some other teams after that. Okay. So right. he comes in. He says, man, he getting rid of everybody. As he sliding in the hot tub, I'm sliding out. So I was like, he's like, man, he said, they just gave a dude a black bag and told him to go. And uh, so they just gave a guy a black bag and told him to go. And, uh, man, he's busting out in tears. Now, mind you, the first cuts was already tried. You see grown men in tears with black bags like Santa Claus is all across wow. their shoulders. You got to pack and you got to go. I can't imagine being around that. And I watch the hard knocks and that, that chokes me up, man. I so can't I'm, watch the it. The coach usually don't talk to you when you leave out. It's just you take your bag. Coach say, yeah, you not, you know. So, as soon as I'm getting out of the hot tub and I'm walking back, I see a guy, hey, you. <laughs> I was like, wow. Oh. I was like, I know what this is. My heart just dropped. So, he said, unfortunately, though, I mean, he said, fortunately, though, Mike Tomlin and the GM wanted to talk to you before you leave. Said, oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. Practice squad. So, mm-hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah. So, I'll go up. And, uh, Cobra's like, uh, we can't trust you blocking for a quarterback at this time. Uh She's a hell of an athlete, you know. If we don't find a back that's 230 pounds, which fits that system, I was like 205, 210 around that time. Yeah. He's like, we'll bring you back for the practice squad. And in my head, I'm thinking, there's a million 235-pound backs. Yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. coming back. Uh, turn the playbook in. I go to Tomlin. Tomlin says, what's your, what's your goals? Or what will you be doing once you leave here after the day? I said, man, listen, you know where I'm from? I got to go back there. It's no telling, right? Once again, no excuse. If you want it, you want it, right? I said, but I got a daughter already. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. I don't really know too much after this. I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, so I said, I'm going to tell you this. If you leave out here today and you don't continue to play football for these next five years, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Mm. That was his words. I appreciate you. Left yeah. out. Most re- real coach though. Nothing bad to say about the organization or anything. Fair yeah. chance. Brought me back twice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so respect for sure. And they gave me a chance to you know play NFL football. Something yeah. you can never take from me. Exactly. Uh, so respect to him. And uh, left out of there. And those next five years was tragic. The, yeah. Those four was those four was a blur. Because really? this is when I mean, we'll kind of move on to the next part. Because mm-hmm. you know. When we talk about addiction, and we talk about depression, mm-hmm. and doesn't care who you are. Oh no, depression, addiction doesn't matter. Mm-mm. Race, religion doesn't matter. Yep. Wealth doesn't give nope. two craps. So, nope. I suffered it, mm-hmm. and obviously, that's what we wanted to really talk about today. Was dive into a little bit about mm-hmm. that with you. Yeah, well, man. Oh, once I got out of there, oh. Just go into, you go into a dark mode. It's super dark. It didn't really get dark for me into, until. You gotta understand, you still get phone calls. If you make it this, if you make it to the final cut, somebody else is calling you. That's what I would have. Assumed. Somebody's calling you ASAP. But I had that. I had that red flag on me. Mm-hmm. I had that. Uh, just that that wild horse once again. Yeah. And this is coming by an organization that had the wildest horses on it. Yeah, so right. I was like, what the, you know, it's like Pac-Man Jones and them at this time. So I'm like, man, how? Yeah. I can't be that wow. I never got in trouble here, <laughs> never got in nothing. But, you know, uh, the coach that I had at that time had a big name, which is Terry Bowden. So his word is his word is fine, you know. Yeah. And was he wrong? No. I hate to put the blame on other men. I think Juwan was more so wrong, right? Because I could have did a lot of things different looking back on it. Sure. But, hey, I am who I am. You know, who I'm not and I'll never be. Uh so, 
after I got done, uh, I come back to Harrisburg. Only reason I came back to Harrisburg because it was given per diem. So the farther you drive, because I drove up there, the farther you drive was the more money you get. So Akron's only like an hour and a half. Harrisburg was three. So I know you was paying me by mile. Drove to Harrisburg. Right. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> math, math checks yeah, out. Ma- ma- <laughs> hey, 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 math was mathing. Hey, right. right? <laughs> so uh, carry the one, right. and yeah, that hey, works. It, 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 it came out to ten. So. I went back uh, to my brother's house. My brother stayed on 4th Street at the time. And uh, I had a room open. It's middle of the summer. The camp is middle of the summer. So it's like those 80, 90, 100 degree days. It's hot as, it's hot as piss, though. So my brother, <laughs> and my brother and them stayed together at this time. And uh, I slept in this one room. No AC. No nothing, right? Uh so I just, you know, I never got that call for that that six weeks. Six weeks is that time you get that call. Because after that, they just don't bring in nobody after that. Like, you know, it is what it is. So I just, like, you know, I start, you know, start trying to mask the feelings. So I'm masking the feelings now at a high rate. You know, I don't ever want to feel. Yeah. So uh, I'm deep off into it. Uh, and Canada gave me a shot. One of the Canada, Saskatchewan, oh, okay. uh, thanks to them in yep. the midst of that. But I was already, I was already checked out of football. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with real life. I get up there, I'm dropping balls. I'm not the same person that was just what three, four months ago. Yeah. It started dropping drastically. I'm not the same person. Mm. So uh, I come back from there. I knew I was getting cut. I wanted to get cut. I wanted to get back. I ain't gonna lie. I never, I didn't even give an effort to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, Came back, and then, yeah, life started hitting. Life was, I'm talking about hitting at a high rate. Uh, broke, sleeping in that in that bedroom, uh, no AC. Then my sister allowed me to start staying at her house. I slept on the couch. Uh, she shared with a friend. They, they shared the house, a townhouse. So I slept on the couch. Suitcase always by me somehow, some way, because I'm still living out of a suitcase. I ain't got a house. It's the same suitcase you've been carrying through mm-hmm. the draft process. You suitcase to suitcase, hotel, hotel. Are you living out of suitcase for that time being? NFL suitcase because you had a hotel for that time being. Uh, so I'm still living out the same suitcase, and like life is just a blur. You know, I'm just, I'm just trying to get high just to get by at this point. I'm getting yeah. high, getting by. Days is going by fast. I'm starting to get a little bit more skinnier. Depression starting to set in. Uh, and then before you know it, depression really sets in. Depression starts setting in to a point of your bones hurt. If you ever went through it, like yeah. you know, I, like I, you know, I talk to a lot of people now that's going through it, and if you ever been through it, you understand. If you haven't, you're not going to understand. And I don't I never want nobody to understand. Right. Your bones start hurting, you start dropping weight drastically. Your thoughts is not the same. Uh, yeah, because you had, you had dropped thirty pounds, right? Man, I I went from NFL weight to one seventy three. Wow. Within yeah, and you those, were like you were like a pretty like I'm talking about big yeah, 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 for sure. Like I was always 10. big because I was always in the sports. Yeah. I was always a pretty uh physique type guy, but one seventy three wasn't yeah, so no. you, you that's what I weighed this morning. Oh 173. Look I'm at my about, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't I, think John could have made I it. I did a like one seventy three exactly this morning. I thought I was sick. <laughs> I'm like the the towel boy from Michigan and happy and what's that and what's that movie? Uh, happy oh, the water boy. Oh, okay. I thought I was sick. Yeah. I mean and you were. I mean, I've been saying. There you go. I was. I just didn't never know. I just didn't never know on that stature and that platform of, I meant that from that standpoint. Yeah. Isn't it crazy how it's a disease, how mental yeah. health can literally affect how your bones feel? Yeah, like how your body feels? Your mental controlling your physical. Like, your physical I have been so sick. Like, yeah. and I've talked about this like two, a year and a half ago, two years or whatever. I was really depressed for like six months. Mm-hmm. I couldn't move. I hurt. Yeah. Could not move. And yep. my life was normal and fine. And it doesn't matter. It still can come up and get you no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I always tell people, yo, that's what drives me today is not wanting to hit back rock bottom. Why are you getting my five? Why you work out? Why you, well, man, I ain't trying to go back to where I was. So that's what keeps me mentally sharp. That's what uh, keeps me out of that content, out of that content phase. Uh and in the midst of that, man, I didn't rehab after. I meant rehab. Did you go to like a like a rehab rehab like I did? I went to rehab rehab. Yeah, I did. I went 30 days. Mm-hmm. How long were you in? 
I went to a so I know, was inpatient. You know, going in, yeah, I was in. Yeah, so, me too. Ain't no out. I was in. So yeah. I was like, hey, pride hitting. I ain't going to nowhere around here. I don't want nobody to see me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. I got I got a lucky wife. My wife sent me. Uh, we went out to Maryland. I don't got no money. She doing this from her funds. I went out to Maryland. Uh, I forgot what the place is called. Uh, Tran- Tranquility? Tranquility something. It's okay. a big mansion. It was like 15 of us. Uh, and then that's where I learned you ain't no better than nobody else. Yeah. Was in there, I was in there with a lawyer. I was in there You're with a person. Lawyer. I was in there with a lawyer. I was in there uh, with people who own their own businesses. Uh, it was like a kind of a bougie one. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you learn when you start talking, some of them humble you real fast. Mm-hmm. Oh, you ain't no better than none of us in here. Mm-hmm. It has no picks. Yeah. yeah. It made me feel normal. It was like, all right, that gave me a sense of like peace. It was like, all right, cool. You like on a Laura totem pole in here, big dog. What you <laughs> You're not nobody better than nobody in here. So yeah. uh I was supposed to stay for a month. I left two weeks. Wow. Wow. Came home, was cool. Thought you cool. You always think you cool. Mm-hmm. Right back. Wow. Mm-hmm. Went right back. Went right back into the old ways. Uh and then like over time, man, like it just hit me hard. My kid start my kid was turning one now. And I'm like, man, listen gotta be done hard look in the mirror never went back to rehab but extensive counseling uh you know the uh, vivitron shot stuff like that oh you took that too Hell okay yeah. That's, yeah that helped me a lot good because you know you can't do nothing with that time people frame taking that yeah. yeah you can't do nothing in that time frame if you do you're not gonna feel it right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. uh so yeah I was counseling after counseling meeting after meeting uh Work on self, work on self, work on self. Look in the mirror, look in the mirror, look in the yeah. mirror. Yeah. And over time, day by day, restless legs, hurting, pain, staring at the TV, just like, damn, what is day going past? That's And that's where I learned all the small tactics. So my small tactics now, like, even when people are going against you or doing certain things, they don't understand what you've been through. So your jabs is like little pencil pokes at me. Mm-hmm. It's not going to do nothing too yeah. much. And yeah. you really gonna have to destroy me. Yeah, because I learned other people's opinions of you are none of your business. Mm-hmm. It's not that they don't matter. It's none of your business. So let them have their opinion. It don't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. Cause like, because it, it doesn't affect you. You know who you really are, Juwan. I know who I really am. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. Most people don't know who they are, and that's where they suffer at. Mm-hmm. I know who I am. I know what I mean. And you know your purpose. I know my purpose. Amen. Right. So yeah. you can't stop nothing that God got planned for me. Yeah. And thank God through all of this whole situation. And I'm here today. Now I yeah. think it really funny. <laughs> He's like, I want to go to a nice rehab. Like I was like, oh, I'm going to Florida. I'm going to go to a 90 day retreat. I'm like, it's going to be amazing, right? This is my plan. So just like a Sandals Resort. That's all. Yeah, it is. yeah. I ended up in Lemoyne. <laughs> oh man, in a, I lived above a subway. Okay, oh. there was a two bed, uh, two apartments where they tore down the wall in the middle, and it was above subway. Probably smelled great. Disgusting. I didn't eat that crap. I don't eat that stuff anymore. But all you can smell for 30 days was Subway bread, like that wow. garbage bread. But I thought, I was, like when you were saying, I'm going, you went to a nice place. I went to, I lived at Subway. You should basically. have picked one that was above a Chick-fil-A and stuff. Ah, yeah. They didn't have the money, though. <laughs> I didn't they have the money. They, they start talking about. Uh, I didn't either. My Garnishing shirt. wages. Yeah. And then we we, we, had, we had took out like a little small loan or something yeah. like that to pay it back. Wow. Like, I was like, I ain't paying them back. And then they said, we garnishing wages. You got to pay back now. <laughs> yeah. But you learned tools in there. Even though, you know, it's two weeks, whatever it was. I learned a lot. Yeah. No, yeah. I learned. I learned stuff that I applied a day. Two weeks was enough. Mm-hmm. But you even gained weight afterwards too, didn't you? Ain't super light. Yeah, so you I was gonna go through that. So like the history of it is like you you had lost a bunch of weight. You went down to like one seventy two or whatever you had said. Yep. Yeah, and then you I went to go see a doctor. Yeah. And then you went the whole way up to two sixty. Two sixty. Went up to two sixty. Wow. So can you tell us about this whole crazy? Yeah, for sure. So I went to go see a doctor, right? And I want to go see an old lady out in, like, Lebanon. (laughs) (laughs) Sure. And she gave me some type of medicine, and it hurt my man part. So I was like, I'm done. One one pill, I'm done. Yeah, I ain't listen. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> That's not I'm sitting there. I got I, I got restless legs. I'm sitting there. I'm like, hey, babe, 
I'm burning. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Man. And like, uh, so we scheduled another one. Uh, <laughs> Well, the doctor pretty much saved everything, man. I was talking to him the other day. Uh, so I was supposed to go see a older guy. This guy was on vacation, luckily. Thank you. Once again, thank God. He's on yeah. vacation. He's like, we can't see him. I said, man, I need to see somebody now. I don't know what's going on. I'm sick. I'm sick, so I need, I need help. I'm at 173. Uh, hey, well, we got Dr. Thomas, you know. Uh, and I'll say the last name if, you know, he won't say it because it's HIPAA. I'm going to say it because I don't care. Yeah, you can say it. Who helped me? Yeah, yeah you can say it. Nothing wrong Dr. with that. Dr. Thomas, uh, he need, and he needs his flowers, right, because he's the one who helped me. Yeah. Uh, so they t- made me go see him. It was an ASAP appointment. He walks in. His dude's like 6'4", big black guy in shape. I see he's everything that I wanted to be during that time. <laughs> right. And uh, he's like, uh, hey, bud, what's going on? And listen, I don't know. I'm sick. He get to feel my ankles. <laughs> they all little. <laughs> I got on this big trench coat, like kind of like army fatigue. Like, what's going on? And uh, I'm like, uh, man, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm sick. I mean, took all the blood. And everything. They said, man, you cool. I said, what you, you know, I told him my past, you know, everything. He's like, uh, what you taking now? He said, man, see, yeah, that's why you ain't supposed to just go to any doctor. Mm-hmm. Some doctors are just here just to push out medicine. Yeah. And to mess you up a little bit more. You need to take this. Took that. Uh, you need to get your dopamine and your serotonin levels back up. I mean, you get mm. you get your serotonin levels back up. Okay. You damage them. Through a lot of pro- throughout your process, you damage those those levels. We need to get those back up to normal. Yeah. All right. So uh we did that and he looked me in my eyes, said, yeah, you gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> and I don't, you know, so process of that, uh, I start feeling more happier, right? Because the, the dopamine, I mean, the serotonin levels is going up, you know? And uh, what's the first thing? And that's why a lot of people are overweight, right? Because food is a happy place. Oof. Oh, yeah. Is it ever? Yeah, like yeah. food, I never knew that. I'm like, damn, I under, now I understand. You understand certain aspects of why some people are a little bit more heavier, right? Because Food feels great. Even today, I, I want to eat whatever I want to eat. Dopamines. I just yep. don't do it because I know, you know, food is energy. So the, whatever you put in your body is what you get out of it. Uh, that's why so many people feel better when they eat fruits and waters and veggies because it's a it's a it's a energy food. Yeah, it's going to have you with energized. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So uh, I got up to two sixty, and uh, what got into my mind to start working back out? I don't know. I still remember my mom. My mom on the back of a porch one day say, boy, you need to get your life together. She's going through the worst times of her life right now. Mm-hmm. She can't really look at me in my eyes at this time. Black circles under her eyes. She's going through what she's going through. Yeah. Uh, so you know the black circles. You know what those I mean. Uh, yep. She's smoking a cigarette. She's like, boy, you need to get back into fitness and somehow, some way back into some type of football, lifting weights up. Yeah. At this time, I ain't trying to hear it, man. That's what I'm, that's what I'm telling myself in my head. So uh, I started back on fitness. I started reading up on stuff. How does this make you feel? What foods you should put in your body? How to, you know, because in college, yeah, I had the body. But the college coach told me what to do. Matt Gildersleeve, shout out to him. He would tell me what to do. I didn't know what it does for what none of those lifts did for the body part. I just know he got paid for this. This is why we get bigger and stronger. Matthew Gildersleeve. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, But I didn't know my body. So they'd be like, oh, you've been on how to do this. No, I didn't. I had to go back and relearn and really study the body, really study what makes you feel happy, what, what foods you should be putting in your body to make you feel energized. Uh, so I'm 260. I told my wife, like, hey, watch this. <laughs> she told me not too long ago. She's like, I didn't even believe it. Mm. How long ago was that? This was three, four years ago now. Yeah. Three years ago. It's been a long journey. So yeah. three years ago, I want to say two, three years ago. I think I started in the front end of 22. Back in the 21, going into the front end of 22. Yeah. Yeah. Staying at it every day. Staying consistent. Staying consistent. Staying consistent. And through that, uh, you find the medicine. That's the dopamine high. Mm. That's what we chase when we try to get high anyway. Yeah. The right. dopamine. That's what gets that. That's what have you happy feeling. It's the dopamine. Right. So my doctor told me when I just had to visit the other day, he said, yo, Juwan, you healed yourself for real. Mm-hmm. Well, God first, right? Because this is his Amen. plan. Yep. But... You healed yourself through something we call 
gym medicine. Mm. Going to the gym, getting those dopamines, serotonin levels staying up, body staying fresh, you feeling good about about the work you put in and the body you have. Yeah. You heal yourself. So what did that look like for you as far as like a like a gym regimen and all that kind of stuff? Like how did so you went from two sixty to what? Uh I went down to one ninety three. Wow. And then uh I was like slim shredded. Okay. But I wanted to put a little bit more bulk on. Bulk on, sure. So yeah, it takes time. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what I mean? It's hard to build strength, it's easy to maintain it. Yeah. So I just started getting after and after. I really just started bulking up within the last year. What are you okay. weighing now? I'm at like two twenty five, wow. two thirty. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's kind of funny when you think about it because you said, you know, you went through everything, put on weight, and then took care of yourself. And we are totally different backgrounds, Mm -hmm. but there's so many similarities. For sure. When it comes to addiction and just trauma, things that have happened in our lives. But like I can say I got sober and then I got addicted to food because that's my dopamines. Yeah. Yep. Milkshakes. So I should weigh 172. That's what my target weight is now I'd, i would like to put on some muscle mass which mm-hmm. I'm, i've been t- telling myself i'm gonna do for about a year mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's been a year since i started eating healthy mm-hmm. so last year at this time i weighed 210 mm-hmm. and then i changed my diet did not work out i've worked out a handful of times that's it but honestly i went from 210 to 170 it dies everything i mean when they say it's 80 20 dude it's 97 percent, man like I it's, say it's 90s it is. I mean, it's it's in the 90s. And just to see, like, and now that you're helping, like, you're doing, you know, struggle to, su- to succeed fitness, mm-hmm. and you're taking all of your experience, strength, and hope, mm-hmm. and you're planting seeds with different people and kids throughout the community mm-hmm. and helping them get fit, mm-hmm. helping them understand diet, yep. and being certified, like, understanding that that was your purpose all along. Like, you got to go wow. through. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Isn't it? Like, to understand, it's like, chills. you went through all yeah. this, I just got them, too. Yeah. You went through all this yeah. just so you could struggle to succeed fitness to help other people. And I can tell you another thing. I called somebody that was heavily into drugs the day I got the day a couple of days before I got sober and they asked me when I was going to get help. So when your mom's still in it and she tells you you need help, like how big was that for you to see like somebody still in it saying, listen, you need to change your life? I seen it different because I seen somebody fighting, just trying to give me advice. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like I, I, they're, they're still giving that's us That's all advice. she needed to say. Yeah. I was looking at her, and she couldn't look at me, and I see the dark circles and the pain in her eyes. Mm. And she's telling me this, and I'm just like, dang. Like, life is, life hitting her, I'm talking about, like, super hard at this point. And you're still trying to give me motivation. Mm-hmm. You're still trying to give me advice. It was almost like now, she knew. And she didn't want me to fall into the trap she was yeah. falling into. Amen. And she was trying to say it. My mom was a tough lady, right? So she was trying to say it without saying it. So she was saying it without saying it. Like, yo, get it together or it can be a lot more different. Get it together, baby. Like, yo, get it together. I still remember that conversation vividly. We talked for like 45 minutes. And we was going through a rough patch at this time uh, because she wasn't. she was doing stuff that I didn't like. Uh, which resulted in kind of to why she not here today. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was on those things, and I'm just like, I'm hard on her. I'm I'm sending voicemails. Like my brothers and sisters always is the ones who tell me to go at her, right? Because you know she'll get on them. But I'm that child that always got on my parents, and they don't like that sometimes. So mm-hmm. sometimes they'll try to meet me back with friction, and sometimes you know me and my mom ain't talk for like a month or two. Cause I I was getting on her and you know she had snapped back out on me and I was like man you gotta get you together yeah yeah you gotta get it together you know like it ain't but I I, I understand like she's been my mom was fifty two she was dealing with this since she was in her twenties yeah and I think I think it, I want to say it gets worse as the years go on because you know it's a chemically imbalance you yeah. chemically imbalance I'm messed up still yeah like I'm on medications I yeah. take medications every day like literally three of them for my brain. Uh, I did have some brain damage mm. from an accident, but I mean, you, everybody knows in my office. I am, I'm, I'm not normal. Like I'm a weirdo. <laughs> and I'm just John. That's I'm just <laughs> John Weird. They say so, and I'm okay with it because that's who I am. Um, and I, but every day I want to grow. Like I know I'm not the man I can be yet because I want to be better every day, and I see that in you. Yeah. And I see like I, it's amazing to me that you're helping so many people. Yeah. Like, and I think that's a. That's what your hustle's all about, and that's why we're so grateful that we had you on here. Yeah, and I, sure. 
And if you're looking, honestly, if you're got kids in sports or you're looking for somebody to point them in the right directions with fitness and diet and things like that, please look up Juwan. Yeah. Please. And we'll put some contact information in the video for you too. Gotcha. Um, Cause yeah. we would love to help your business grow as well. well I appreciate it. I think we should put a bow on it this way. Okay. So at the very end of that article, I was talking about earlier, this oh, yeah, is what sorry. you had said. No, that's great. No. Um, this is what uh, Juwan had said at the end of the article and was something we talked about before we got on yep, the podcast. Yep. Let's today. finish with this. Yes, yeah. This so, is perfect. So he said, when it's all said and done, it's about how you help others in your life, not about how you help yourself. Sharing health and fitness with others and sharing my story is how I approach that daily. And it's gotten me to where I am and is is hopefully having a positive impact on others. Amen. Yeah. yeah. I think that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's, that's really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. We're excited. Always love. I appreciate right. you. You too, man. Yeah. Thanks, right. Thanks. Thanks.